Welcome, everyone. I am Peter Freer. I am the founder of Play Attention, the former CEO of Play Attention. Uh, you may have seen me on uh, Good Morning America or seen me on uh, uh, New York Times or in Time Magazine. Uh, I was featured in all, on all of those places uh, at one point or the other. It's been many years in doing this. So I really appreciate you being here and uh, looking at neurotech. And uh, so we'll be looking at new technology, new neurotech today. And um, in light of that, if you would uh, turn off or at least mute your cell phones and, uh, or turn them off because paying attention uh, to this today is pretty important and we are very distracted people anymore. So if you could, and I'll discuss by the way, attention and how it pertains to technology uh, in this presentation. A little background, Play Attention is sponsoring this webinar, and it was from our work in Play Attention uh, that all of this uh, developed in the neurotechnology that I developed for Play Attention. I will discuss a little bit, and then we'll discuss advancements to that. As a matter of fact, this headrest behind me here, you can kind of see a bigger picture of it up behind me. This headrest is actually um, loaded full of neurotech. And you can see it's about a foot away from the back of my head and it will still read my neuro data. So I hope uh, that uh, I can demo that for you. So I'm not going to just do a PowerPoint presentation today, but I'm going to be able to demo for you some of the newest things going on. Uh, I guarantee you, you haven't seen before because I invented them a short while ago. We really haven't introduced them publicly yet. So one of the, the critical things, most salient things that I've learned in 30 years of this work is that everything that we see, every moonlit sky, every starry sky, every sunset, every kiss, everything we've ever learned, everything is reduced down to the random firing of neurons in the brain. That's our whole universe. It exists inside our brain, and it exists because of the communication of these neurons. The brain is comprised of many millions, if not billions of neurons, and they speak to each other. Now you can see here that they are contiguous. In other words, they're next to each other, but they're not continuous. In other words, they don't actually touch each other. When they talk to each other, they emit in that space between them a little neurotransmitter, which is an electrochemical pulse of energy. When you have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of them firing at one time, it creates a field of energy that oscillates across the surface of the cortex. And that field is pick up by, picked up by the technology we'll discuss today. But to just summarize this brief section, again, the important fact of our lives and our brains is that the brain is an organ of reduction. It reduces everything input through our five senses into the random firing of neurons in the brain, and that governs our entire life. Yeah, we don't have any control over it. There's no user manual for it, for certain. We don't have the ability to peer inside and see how it works. In contrast to that, if I want to be able to uh, see what my heart rate is doing, and I get on my elliptical or my treadmill or my bike, and I grab the handlebars, within a few seconds, I can see my heart rate. And if I'm not going fast enough to get a good workout, I know to pedal faster. If I'm pedaling too fast and my heart rate's too high, which is dangerous for me, then I know to slow down a little bit. I get a feedback loop. We can do that with our hearts, but neurotechnology is what enables us to do that with our brains, all right? Neuromonitors do give us control and the ability to monitor what happens in our brain in real time, and therefore give us control over some aspects of brain function. 
So you can see what these little neurons look like as they're next to each other and they whisper to each other. And you can think of the way these cells talk to each other much like your cell phone. They named your cell phone a cell phone for a good reason. The cell phone is based on the cells in your brain, same concept. If I have my cell phone here right now, and I only have one cell phone in the world, it's nothing more than a paperweight. The value in a cell phone comes from the fact that it can connect to every other cell phone on the planet, and it can connect to larger networks on the planet. And that's its true value. So communication is its true value. And that's the same thing with the cells in your brain. The cell by itself has no real, serves no real purpose. Its purpose happens and its meaning happens when it's in context with other cells. It communicates with other cells. This is supremely important because that's what governs our day. That's what makes up our day when we step out of bed. That makes my relationships with everyone around me. All of that is comprised and it originates in the brain itself. Now, when we're looking at neurotechnology, those cells firing and delivering information have different bandwidths. And you can think of bandwidths if you're, if you're not familiar with that term. If you can think of it, it's uh, uh, an area much like we used to, we could talk about like our, our old FM radios. Uh, can I get a hand up for anyone that has um, uh, knowledge of FM radio still? Uh, give me a hand up if you know what FM radio is. It's, right now we use satellite radio for the most part, but some of us still listen. Okay, a few of us still remember what FM radio was. Do you remember what, um, what actually um, happens when you turn the dial on your radio? Right. When you turn the dial on your radio, you can shift from 99.9 .9 FM to 105.4 FM. You change the frequency and then you can listen to different stations on those frequencies. That's really what happens in your brain. Right. When we are in a, a, a uh, let's say a delta state, see this long rolling wave down here. If that is dominant then we know that you're asleep. Delta is dominant when you're sleeping. And that's very slow, long rolling wave. It's one to three hertz. Theta is four to seven hertz. It's a little bit faster. And when you're uh, meditating or uh, maybe relaxing and not paying attention to anything, you're just drifting off, uh, theta is dominant. It's in the, it happens in the twilight of sleep generally. If any of you can give me a show of hands, how many people have caught yourself uh, feeling like you're falling when you're going to sleep and you you wake up, you startle yourself because you felt like you were falling in bed. Anybody here? Yeah, several of us. I do that on, a, on occasion myself. I'll catch myself falling, um, sometimes in a dentist uh, dental chair if I'm you know really relaxed or when I'm getting a massage and I'm very relaxed. So that is a theta state. And as a matter of fact, if you're a child, you live in a heavy theta state, a heavy daydreaming state, up until about the age of six, uh, when your brain starts to form more concrete patterns. Alpha is when we're relaxed and alert. You can see my cursor on that, I hope. And uh, that is about uh, eight to 15 hertz or so. Beta uh, is a little bit faster when we're processing information. Gamma is much higher um, on that spectrum. But these are all different bandwidths, just as I mentioned before, changing our um, radio station from 101.5 or 102.9, something like that. That's a different frequency. So we can listen to all of these through neurotechnology. The types of monitoring that we have when we do this um, is called passive monitoring, reactive monitoring, and active monitoring. So passive monitoring is probably one of the easiest to explain. If I step on my scale, I monitor my weight. That's very passive monitoring because very many times I step on the scale, I look down at the weight 
and I'm totally disgusted with myself and I go on with, with my day. So it's very passive monitoring. I just look and I don't really do anything to change my life, right? But the reality is uh, we want active monitoring, the type of um, monitoring that takes me to change my behavior, right? So if I go back to this slide right here and I'm monitoring my weight and I have a Snickers bar in my hand, and then I jump on the scale and it's much too high. And I take the Snickers bar and I throw it across the room and I vow never to, to uh, eat a lot of sweets again because my weight's too high. Well, then I get kind of a, a reactive monitor, don't I? That's a little bit different, isn't it? I change my behavior due to what I see. So that's reactive monitoring. So in, again, we have passive, reactive, and then active monitoring. Sometimes it's just called interactive monitoring. And I'd like to talk to that and about that and discuss that with you just a little bit. Active monitoring, when we're having active and interactive monitoring, I actually change what I'm doing based on the feedback I get from the neurotechnology. This will become a lot clearer when I actually uh, demo this for you in real time. It's what we do in the play attention system where you wear the armband, right, on your arm, and it's looking at a neuro signal. And of course, we develop that, we hold patents on doing that, and it's been around since about 2005. The way that we do it is it forces your engagement to the activity in front of you. And it makes you concentrate on that to a point where you can activate the screen. And I'll talk to you about that. And then we challenge you uh, to do a little bit more each time you play. We know that challenge is a critical catalyst to forming new uh, brainwave circuitry, brain circuitry. We know that challenge is a way to form new uh, circuitry in the brain, new neural networks. And we provide that in play attention with deliberate practice so that you practice exercises that increase your executive function. And I'll talk to you a little bit about how that's done just with this simple example. This is a game called time on task with interactive or active monitoring. When we play this game, the objective is to start it right away because we know that people who are our primary clients with um, ADHD, have weak executive function when it comes to planning, organizing, and following through. So one of the things they have incredible difficulty with, which is a hallmark of ADHD, one of the hallmarks of ADHD, is that they have a hard time starting and then finishing a task. And any of you here, do I have any parents here who have ADHD yourself or you have a child with ADHD? Well, that's a lot of us, thank you. All right. So the fact is that when we have this, you can try to do homework with them, but a 20 minute homework assignment often takes two hours and a fight uh, to be able to finish it, which is a real problem. If you're an adult with this, how many people here can identify with me saying, I start 20 projects and I finish none? Okay, that's the vast majority of people who have personal ADHD problems. So we give you a, a skill. This little forklift driver is brain enabled, right? This, this activity is brain enabled. So with the armband on and play attention, I actually will move the forklift driver and pick up these crates and place them on the truck. That's my job, that's the task. And when I get all the crates on the truck, I'll drive the truck off all because my mind is engaged to this. All right. And this is uh, what makes play attention so strong because then attention is no longer abstract. It is concrete and it's controllable by me. Just like sitting on my bike and seeing my heart rate, I'm able to see my attention in real time. But it also challenges me. The game challenges me by at times becoming a fraction more difficult. Now, we auto calibrate. One of the features that we developed over the years is auto calibration. So you don't have to put on our neurotechnology and wait to use it. You put it on, it auto calibrates to your best level of attention, and then it will start the activity with you. Now, at any point that you fall off and you don't do as well, then the activity stops 
and does not allow you to continue until you focus back in. So we're always putting you in that peak attentive state to play, challenging you to do a little bit better as you do well in the game. And then we give you this deliberate practice model uh, so that you get this immediate feedback on each little step of this so that you risk no failure, but you're constantly challenged to do more. And that is what builds new neural circuitry. That's the key. And that's all done through neurotechnology. And again, if you have not seen this uh, done before, I'm going to demo it with this headrest behind me, which is um, basically contactless form of what we do. And it's used by, uh, right now we're in development with over 14 different automotive OEM, original equipment manufacturers, the big names in the automotive field. And uh, this is what we'll be using to look at fatigue, uh, stress, uh, cognitive load, how, you, how much you're distracted by using your cell phone and driving, things like that. And I'll, I'll actually demo that in just a little bit. Another way that we use it is the uh, mindful media player in uh, play attention. Mindful media player is just a, um, a media player that you can drag your own files into to play them or you can use some of our mindful media tools and media videos, and you can play them. I think I have an affirmations video I'm going to show you just a little bit of. So I won't show you how to demo it because I think there is a, uh, a, an, uh, a webinar next week. Uh, and if you want uh, to be at that webinar to see the mindful media player, because it is super cool. The fact that the video player is brain enabled, so I can turn it on with my mind, I can turn it off, deactivate. But when I am in the zone, I can look at some of the most beautiful videos and watch and uh, do affirmations. As a matter of fact, let me just do that. I'm gonna stop the share for this right now. And I'm uh, going to actually uh, play this video and just make certain it actually shows up this time. Because again, Zoom is a bit fickle on these kinds of things. So let me now um, open this up. So hopefully you can see it. And if it does come up, if you would, um, let me right here. Let me know if you can see that screen. It says play again, go to library. Can everyone see that? Perfect. Okay, let's play the video and you can actually see what a mindfulness video is like. And this is, I think, an affirmations video. Start today's session by finding a comfortable position. Settle in and let your mind be still. As each affirmation appears on the screen, read it silently or aloud. Repeat each affirmation several times. Take deep breaths. Absorb the positive energy. Let go of any negative thoughts. You will repeat this process for each new affirmation that appears. to stop that because it is so beautiful. Now imagine that is brain enabled so that when I am actually focused on it, that I can actually engage that and make it happen. But if I start daydreaming or thinking about what I'm doing at work, it stops. It's a gentle reminder to me to be able to re-engage with it right? I'm not going to use my phone during that time. I'm going to engage with that. And you get this beautiful affirmations uh, video that is brain enabled, but it becomes so engaging because it is 
brain enabled. I hope that makes sense. Does anyone have any questions about that? The brain enabled, and that comes through, of course, with the armband that we have, the play attention armband. You control that. And that's the mindful media player. There will be a full demo of that, I think, next, uh, or I think it's next week. Uh, so you can attend that webinar. If you want to attend it, you can just type in the chat um, media player and uh, someone will contact you with a link so that you can get the link to attend uh, the media player. And they're telling me it's next Tuesday. Perfectly. Okay, great. I'm going to turn down the audio here because Oh, some people are saying it's a bit loud. So let me turn that down just a little bit. Okay, and let's see if that works. All right, so I want to go back to my slides now. And let me know if you can see the um, screen. Can everyone see Mindful Media Player on the screen? Okay, let's try that again. No, if you can't see it, I'm going to actually bring it up again. Let me stop the share and go back to it. One moment. Yeah, it's a quirky way that sometimes that, uh, that Zoom handles PowerPoint for some reason. Let's try that. Can everyone see the Mindful Media app on the screen? All right, perfect. Okay, that looks like we got it that time. Okay. All right, so moving past Mindful Media Player, the ability for our brain to engage with a player and activate it. And if we lose our engagement to it, it deactivates. It's quite fascinating. It's a great way to uh, be able to um, really use your mind to get engaged with something. So using active monitoring, uh, Tufts University School of Medicine did three randomized controlled studies on play attention based on the fact that we do this type of uh, active monitoring that involves us uh, activating and deactivating a game because of brain engagement, um, being able to use a deliberate practice model, and then challenging students through throughout the course of using play attention. Here's what happened when you actually use neurotechnology to do that. We had increases in, uh, and these were all significant increases, not just modest, but significant increases in executive function, attention, behavioral control, no increase in medication as well. So if you look, they gave during that, uh, that those tests, uh, the three studies, they actually compared us to brain games because everybody said, well, I can just use brain games. Well, you can see that no improvements in executive function, no improvements in attention, and no improvements in behavioral control. And they increased their medication an average of nine milligrams average. That So brain games were equivalent to no intervention whatsoever because they had a no intervention group. And then they went back six months after the final testing was done with play attention to see if there was uh, perseverance that they were able to maintain the skill levels after six months. And they found that they did. Brain games had nothing to start. They had nothing after six months. Same with the non-intervention. This The reason I'm bringing this up is because it's important to understand that neurotechnology can be an incredibly important tool to help us make significant changes to our lives, especially to an ADHD brain, an autistic brain, um, a traumatic brain injury. I'm working with um, uh, one of my students now. I'm a martial arts instructor, been at it for a long time. Uh, is anyone here familiar with the UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Challenge, where people get in a cage and uh, have at it. And it's kind of crazy. It's a very popular sport. Uh, so one of my top students was in that type of fighting. And I told him it was uh, not a good idea that he would have 15 minutes of fame and a lifetime of misery. 
and uh, he's incurred the lifetime of misery. And he did have his 15 minutes of fame. He was on pay-per-view several times. I cornered him at the Staples Center in Los Angeles at UFC 104. And he was brain damaged um, at that point. And he was uh, basically booted from the UFC. And he's now in the clinical trials at uh, the Cleveland Clinic, uh, the same as the NFL players. But we've gone, we've used neurotech with him. Fortunately, I could let him get on play attention. And it has vastly changed his life. He now can, he, he started more martial arts classes. He had to have his wife come with him because he couldn't remember the students' names. He couldn't remember what he taught the day before. And then he couldn't even plan for his classes. Now he does all of that. He plans for all of his classes. He uses a whiteboard and he's an entirely different person. His wife called me a short while ago and said, you know, I have one less child to deal with at home now. He's so independent and he's getting his life back. Now, how important is that? I mean, that's not just me talking. That's the reality. As a matter of fact, Netflix has filmed him. And within the next six months, hopefully you'll see that released. His name is Spencer the Kingfisher. You can look him up on uh, YouTube. So the benefits of neuromonitors, uh, obviously, and I'll tell you about the goldfish here in just a moment. We can improve attention. We can improve meditation relaxation, cognitive load, peak performance, mindfulness, emotions, sleep, distraction, and huge, uh, huge leaps and bounds in executive function. As a matter of fact, to improve executive function and human performance, I've worked with U.S. Olympic bobsled and luge, NASCAR, NASA, Da Vinci robotic surgeons, nuclear power operators. As a matter of fact, I actually lectured at the United Nations in Vienna, Austria, based on my work with the nuclear power operations out of uh, Canada. And uh, my wife and I are actually co-authors of a paper on human performance with the International Atomic Energy Agency of the United Nations. So let me, before I flip to the last slide, I do want to demo for you. And let's have some fun about seeing what this is actually like. So I'm going to stop this share so we don't see the slides. And I'm going to um, actually show you what it is like to be able to use the technology. I'm going to use the technology that's in the back of the chair. I'm going to step out of the way of it for just a second. And you can see that this is just a normal looking headrest. But if you look very closely at the detail, you'll see a series of rings in here, there is an array under there that is picking up my neural signal. And I just turned on the unit, so it is now active. I do want to show you what that's going to do for us here. So first thing, let's just take a look at what is happening in the background in real time. So I'm going to share my screen again, and hopefully you'll be able to see this one. Where is it? There we go. Let me know if you can kind of see a blue brain on your screen. Can everybody see the hand raised if you can see it? Super, okay. Now, when I connect to this, remember all those, those uh, bandwidths we saw in real time? Watch what happens. And remember, this is coming from this headrest that's about a foot away from my head. All right, let's take a look and see. Everybody see what's happening in real time? I'll enlarge this for you just a little bit. There you go. Can everybody see it in real time? You see at the top, that's all the raw data coming from my head. Delta, where you have, if Delta were dominant, I'd be sound asleep. Theta, daydreaming, not really focused. Alpha, relaxed alert. Beta and beta one and beta two processing information. All of this is coming from me. When it's the same thing that we are able to look at when we're looking at the play attention armband. But in reality, what we do with this is we write algorithms over it. And to show you that this, these are not just made up, watch me interfere with the signal by running my hand between my head. You see it disrupts the signal vastly from between my head and the, uh, the headrest. And then it'll normal, normalize here as it begins to pick up the data again. 
Now, this is the first time in history that we've been able to do this without touching anyone, right? Because I think everyone here is familiar with seeing all the neurotech devices that you have that have the big either skull caps on, they put uh, gels so that it'll go through your hair and paste to your head so that they can get good signal. And um, then you have the really sophisticated fun ones, you know, that you can buy um, off over the counter now and look at your brain activity. Uh, the problem is, is that when we're using this on a daily basis, um, as a matter of fact, we're in the uh, process of, of developing a, a pillow company that will actually use this in the pillow. So we can monitor real sleep, not just that nonsense sleep that you get from uh, uh, your iWatch or uh, Fitbit or that kind of thing, where they're just monitoring how still you are. Um, you actually can monitor brain activity through your pillow. But you can also, before you leave bed, imagine starting my day with affirmations, right? I am grateful I, or I am strong, those kinds of things. So that you start the day and it's brain enabled. You start the day you want to start. I, if I have a TED talk I'm going to deliver or a presentation like this and I want to be in a peak state, then I do a peak performance app before I leave bed. So I control my day the way I want to. And I get to monitor my sleep. And prior to going to sleep, we have algorithms that help you go to sleep. And I think I should talk about algorithms just a little bit. Algorithms, if you remember your algebra, you know, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, that kinds of thing. When <clears throat> you look at these brain, uh, the brainwave uh, input here, we create ways to use those data because that's really all that is, is our incoming data. We use those data to create algorithms. And the algorithms are what we use to monitor attention or fatigue or mindfulness or meditation or relaxation. We create them with this. And ours are some of the best algorithms in the world uh, because they've been tested and proven effective, like the play attention, attention algorithm and how well that did in the tough studies. Right? Now you can see what's behind all of that. So I'm going to actually quit this application, I'm going to show you another one, all right? So this next one is uh, something that we use uh, that's very uh, similar to what we use in a vehicle. So I'm gonna show you that now. And when we do that, there we go, let me, um, now that this is up, I'm gonna share my screen. Hopefully that will come up. And let me, uh, tell me, uh, just to be certain, uh, that you can see kind of a, a blurry picture of a road, if you can. Thank you. Everybody raising your hand here is so helpful to me since uh, Zoom has been real finicky about presenting my slides. All right, so what I'm going to do is connect again to the headrest. And then can everyone on the side of the screen over here where my cursor is, can you see the blank bar? If you can, would you raise your hand? Perfect. All right, so in a moment when I connect to this, that bar is going to turn green. And you can think of that as an attention thermometer. The more attention I pay, the higher I can get it, All right? And what this is going to help us uh, understand is cognitive load, all right? Does everyone here, is anyone here familiar with the term cognitive load? Just a few of us. Okay, I'm gonna explain what cognitive load is. If you imagine that your brain is like a computer and your brain has only so much capacity to, to process information, if it's overwhelmed and your load is too high, then you function a lot less efficiently. And probably one of the best examples of this is trying to text and drive. How many people here realize that texting and driving is actually more dangerous than drunk driving. Okay, good, a lot of us, that's good. Because a lot of us still attempt to do it. A lot of, you know, I will be behind a car and it's weaving as if the person is insanely drunk. So I try to get around it as fast as I can and get by. And I look briefly in the window 
and that person is driving with their forearms and they're texting on their cell phone. How insane is that? That risks their life and everyone else's life around them, yet we do it. So one of the things that automotive manufacturers would like us to do through the address is also monitor cognitive load, right? So I'm going to actually uh, attempt to text for you while I'm doing this. So let's see if I can actually do it. But first, let's see if it can pick up my attention. Let's connect. Remember, you'll see the green bar over here. It auto calibrates to me. Same thing we have in play attention. So here comes the green bar, I hope. There it is saying, no, it doesn't like that. Let's try it again. Sometimes it takes one or two times to connect. Let's try it again. All right, there we go. Okay, I get into, let's get into a full attentive state. Now, if I start talking to you, because talking places a little bit of load on my ability to concentrate, notice that my attention goes down because I am talking to you, right? That's cognitive load. How much I'm talking and thinking actually does not help me drive. So watch what happens when I start the video. The video is brain enabled and it'll start driving when I get really attentive. Driver distraction detected. Now watch what happens when I start to text. Driver distraction detected. I'm gonna stop texting, go back to driving. Pay attention to resume driving. If you kids don't stop it, I'm turning the car around Drive right now. Detected. All right. How many people understand what you just Pay saw? Pay attention to resume driving. All right. So in real time, and this thing's a foot away from my head, it's able to monitor how engaged I am to my driving. Uh, and it's also showing me how much placing load on all of that actually detracts from my ability to be safe in driving. Isn't that crazy? And it's not touching me. That's the other crazy thing about this, is that it's all, you would not know, it's an entirely passive monitor. Now, do you remember what I said about passive and active um, monitoring, right? So it's a passive monitor in the, in the headrest. You would not know that it's there. The only time it becomes active as if you are not able to focus, right? You're not able to focus enough and it, you become a little dangerous. And then it becomes active. It becomes reactive or interactive, right? At that point. And it starts to say, you need to pay attention to drive, all right? You're too distracted to drive. Your cognitive load is too high. And this is, so another thing that it can do right now, um, how many people here are familiar with um, Iron Man, the movie, Robert Downey Jr.? Did a bunch of us watch that? Quite a few of us watched. Very good. Who knows who Jarvis is? Can you type that in if you know who Jarvis is in Iron Man? Anyone know that? See, that's a real challenging question. See, I haven't got anyone responding to who is Jarvis. Jarvis is the voice that talks to Iron Man, the artificial intelligence built in. It is. Somebody said, oh, it's his Alexa. It's his AI system. That's exactly what it is. And Jarvis says, um, sir, you're at 50% power. We're going to need to reboot the system. Sir, you know, I, and in the car, what would it be like if the car said to you, ma'am, I noticed that you're stressed. Would you like me to play some relaxing music for you? Should I reroute your drive or can I change the temperature in the car for you? Now that we can do right now, right? We put an AI system in, it talks to you, you have an avatar with you and it's realizing what your needs are. And this is the future of neurotech. Now, the reason that th this works so much better than placing gizmos on your head, how many people here have ever seen someone um, driving around in a car with a gadget like that on their head. Anybody ever seen that? Anyone been in the grocery store and seen it? No. We have uh, really a phobia about wearing things that make us look kind of strange. 
And these gadgets on her head, and this is one of the reasons I developed this type of neurotechnology, because it's not strange, it's hidden. No one knows it's there, but it can change my life. It can save my life. It can save other people's lives. I, the first year I introduced this at CES, if you're not familiar what CES is, it is the largest uh, trade show in the world as far as consumer electronics. It's usually in Las Vegas here in the United States, and it is filled with 200,000 people latest technologies. I showed mine and it was early one morning because we were packed out for every day we were there. There were people swarming the booth because they'd never seen anything like this. Never. And they could sit down. And this, if I were in your house right now, you could sit down in front of this and you could take control of the screen just as I have. And so they were doing it at CES. And uh, that morning though, it was really early. I had just set up the headrest and a fellow came down. He said, do you mind if I try this? I really think it's important. So he sat next to me and I said, hey, try to drive the car and then we'll text and you'll see what we, what we can do. So he did the, the uh, activity I just showed you. And he looked at me and said, I wish I had this six months ago. And I said, what happened six months ago? He said, I'm from Poland. And my uh, wife, uh, I was here in the States working. My wife uh, and my son uh, were with her mom and dad. And they went out to dinner together and her dad fell asleep behind the wheel on the way home and they all died. So that is significant when you are, you know, he said, I just needed this. We need to have this kind of thing. And it, it uh, it's obvious that we do need this type of technology. And this is just one of the basic things that we can do uh, with neurotech. I do want to show you one more application uh, before we adjourn. And let me pull that up for you. I actually have to start this one. I know that uh, uh, Zoom is a little bit more finicky about this one, but I'm going to start this one. This is called Lotus and Play Attention actually sells this app. And we also sell this app to very high-end spas. Lotus is a mindfulness activity. So imagine a closed Lotus flower. And when you're using Play Attention, you'd use the armband. And if you're in your car, you could use it with this headrest when they finally come out uh, in a, probably a couple of years. Um, when we do this, being engaged to this closed lotus flower, I can open it petal by petal. If I lose my mindfulness to this flower, the petal I'm on will close. And it puts me in a feedback loop. It tells me I'm not mindful because I know people here probably have bought a mindfulness app. They sell them all over the place. Sometimes they're free. How many people have used a mindfulness app? Maybe on your phone. Hands up. Quite a few of us. Perfect. But then when you turn it on and you go into it maybe a minute, right? How do you know if you're even engaged to it anymore? You don't, you don't know, because you'll be drifting away, thinking about your work, thinking about what you have to make for dinner, thinking about what you're going to do on the weekend. And then you go, I, I'm supposed to be mindful to this. So you try to pull yourself back in, right? So in this case, I get a real-time feedback loop. I know when I'm engaged, I know when I'm not engaged. Everybody understanding what I'm talking about? Okay, so I'm going to actually start this app and then I'm going to tune you into it as soon as it starts. This is a little bit tricky because this is a Unity app and uh, Zoom is not very friendly to Unity apps, but it'll start here in a second. I'll switch over. And it's up. Let me know if you can see the lotus in front of you. And I'll need to tab back to you. Right, so we'll make certain that everybody can see that. I'm going to. So if you, I just switched off of it. So I'm going to make certain I'll bring it back up. 
and hopefully you'll be able to see it. All right. So if uh, you can see this, you can see I can open the pedal by mine. And if I, if you're not able to see it, I'm not able to see you because this app is taking up my whole screen. Let me see if I can minimize that. Right now. If my assistant would come back in, if she cannot see it, let me know. Otherwise, I'll consider that you can see it. Notice I'm moving it, but if I start to talk and I'm disengaged, it goes back and it closes. It waits for me to get back into the zone. you were able to see that um did, did you see it Does someone type in yes or no i hope you could see that it's a little tricky perfect okay great 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 it's a little bit tricky on uh, sometimes when you're using those things and uh, what it allows me to show and what it doesn't allow me to show on zoom kind of crazy so i have to constantly make certain i'm i'm able to show you this the slides um i'll wrap up here and what i'll do too at the end is if you have questions, I'll field them right here at the end as well. Um, you can type your phone number if you'd like a call from Play Attention to discuss uh, a consultation, right? Uh, so just type your phone number in. No one else will be able to see it except for the staff here. If you want to attend the webinar uh, for next week to look at Play Attention, you can just type in webinar and someone will email you or contact you to send you a link regarding that webinar. If you would like to, to visit the mindful uh, mindfulness uh, media player uh, app that uh, will be next week's mindful media player webinar, uh, please type in mindful and we will make certain that you get a link so you can see uh, more about those beautiful videos that you get. You can actually get a subscription to getting videos, new videos per month for new affirmations, um, just new mindfulness. Um, uh, activities, meditations, all kinds of things, great things that you can just get a subscription to and you are, be, you know, to become a mindfulness master. You know, it's kind of like being your own personal Zen master because you actually can train yourself to do these things. So again, um, play attention. You can type it in and someone will call you if you want a consultation. If you want to type consultation in or your phone number, then webinar if you'd like to attend the play attention webinar or mindful if you want to be in the mindfulness webinar. Now I will be able to field questions uh, if you have any um, and I missed them earlier. Uh, you can type them in right now and I will address those uh, anything with you. And while we're wrapping up, I just wanted to thank everyone here. I know everyone is busy and life is somewhat crazy right now. But I really appreciate you taking time to visit with me and uh, to um, basically understand some very new technology. Uh, BS said, my, from my understanding, what is the threshold for focus and how was that set? Has this been compared to learning thresholds? The focus threshold is a proprietary method that we use on incoming data. Uh, so when the data are coming in from the headrest or the armband, we run a window over those data very quickly, and we determine where your personal best attention is. Not my personal best, but your personal best, so that the program instantly customizes itself and the algorithm customizes itself to you, all right? Now, that is part of the, when you mentioned learning thresholds, it is a critical catalyst to learning something new. And of course, one of the things that we do is that we actually are able to challenge you during your play so it becomes a little more difficult and it helps 
uh, build your new neural network so that you are learning much faster. Um, DW asks, what about kids with hyper-focus for gaming, not just, uh, just not everything else? Right, okay. So one of the things you might've noticed in the play attention graphics, that's a really good question. The play attention graphics are quite simplified. They're fun and engaging, but it's not going to be Halo, right? Or Grand Theft Auto or anything else that's crazy out there. I mean, they have so much stimulation overwhelming them. They're satiated. You know, it's like giving a candy addict a free cotton candy. They're just into it. You can call them for dinner and they don't hear you. They are super hyper-focused. In the classroom, a classroom teacher cannot under her best circumstances compete with that. So they have no problems hyper-focusing. But when we look at uh, activities like just learning in the classroom and reading and writing, which we're expected to be able to do, we have to be able to adjust our minds for that. And so that's why we use the type of graphics that we have. And uh, uh, that is how we still develop all of these uh, executive function skills for clients, uh, because we, we absolutely have addressed all of these issues. That was a really good question. I hope that was a good answer for you. LM said, can this system uh, improve auditory attention, especially if there's an auditory process. We have, I'm glad you asked that, LM. We actually have three auditory processing modules in play attention that you can get. One is auditory home, auditory school, and auditory for work for adults. So let's say at home, LM, you say, hey, Robert, I need you to go to, go to your bedroom, put your pajamas on, brush your teeth, and get ready for bed. So Robert runs up to his uh, his bedroom and you go up there an hour later and you said, I need you to go to your bedroom, put your pajamas on, brush your teeth, get ready for bed. So he's sitting on the edge of your bed playing a Game Boy. Has he brushed his teeth? Has he put his pajamas on? No, he's not. He processed only the first piece of that information. The rest of it, just like that. So we have modules that actually teach that uh, in uh, Play Attention because it's a skill. If we don't have it, it's not going to come in by osmosis. We have to learn it. I hope that makes sense to you. Good question. Uh, BS said, gotcha. I understand likely answers I'm looking for are bound within the patents. Uh, thanks for an uh, answering. Um, I really appreciate, again, everyone here. Great questions at the end. Uh, if you have, uh, uh, yeah, and LM says you apply this to reading comprehension and pathways for dyslexic students. Absolutely have. There's actually an academic bridge program where you can use real reading with them while they see their attention in real time or can listen just for their attention. Or you can see their attention as they're reading quietly to themselves. You should really look at getting a consultation so you can see what is there because everything that you've asked for, we've got embedded in the play attention system. Good questions. I've loved it. Thank you so much. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed yourself. And I hope you know how important all of this is uh, to be able to control uh, our minds and, uh, and be able to be in charge of ourselves. BS said, how has this been used in body-mind activities, yoga and Tai Chi? We actually have uh, a Tai Chi type of program in there called uh, Motor Skills, and that's gonna be available shortly. Um, and it is like a moving Tai Chi with play attention. Everyone have a great holiday upcoming. Thank you. Take care, everyone.